right, Senator Booker, up next we have Kate French from the Northern Plains Resource Council. I just want the record to show everybody got clapped, but you got a lot of woos. Oh, there. yeah. Well, sure. My reputation sure precedes me. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming this afternoon. Thank you, um, yeah. So my name is Kate French. I'm here representing Northern Plains, um, also the Western Organization of Resource Councils, and it's a network of seven states. Um, and we are a grassroots organization. Um, I originally come from Colorado, so I have been living in Montana for eight years, but I come from a family of teachers, of nurses, um, grandfather was a union lawyer, and we, I come from a place where we believe in and fight for communities. So now I've found a new community in Montana um, with Northern Plains, and this organization was started 45 years ago by farmers and ranchers in southeastern Montana who banded together to halt coal development in southeastern Montana. So. Um, you know, there is a perception in the West that coal development and the fossil fuel industry, that that's the economic backbone and the only driver of our economy. And to tell you the truth, I've seen it on the ground. This industry does more harm than good. We have a member, yeah, it's true. <laughs> we have a member, Steve Charter, who ranches in the Bull Mountains, and the, the coal underneath his land, it was leased out you know, by the federal government without his consent, this is legal, and uh, now there is an active coal mine underneath his ranch, and that coal mine now has produced subsidence cracks that are so big, I mean, they're so big cows can fall into it, and he is a rancher, and so it just makes me so mad because he wants to pass this land on, he wants it to make a living, he wants to pass this land on to future generations. And that's just not right. And then on the other side of things, 7,000 people in Montana are employed by the coal industry. You know, and so a, a switch to, to clean energy, that is a great thing, that's a really great thing, but only if we plan carefully for the future. And, <laughs> and I, just, I just really want to make sure that, that people all across our state have have an economic future that's bright, that they have opportunities, that they have jobs waiting for them. And, and I want to just make sure that we have stable, small, rural communities. I don't want them to be wiped out. So what would a Clinton administration do to ensure that our clean energy future creates jobs, opportunity, and stability for our local communities? I, I, really, I, I really love how you phrase that question because we often want to demonize uh, folks who don't agree with us but there are a lot of good Americans are being employed by the coal industry. And I really appreciate the fact that you said, uh, you know, I, have a, I come from on my grandmother's side, coal miners who moved from Alabama, of all places, to Des Moines, Iowa, to do, or Buxton, it's a th town that's not even there. Uh, I always say that I'm related to just about every African American in Iowa right now uh, because it was a black coal mining town in them. And, and so just to say we're going to get rid of that, um, it doesn't really understand um, um, and it doesn't reflect the compassion uh, that uh, Secretary Clinton has for all Americans, no matter what jobs they're doing, who are fighting to do what's best for their family. And so I started applauding when you talked about what's the right way to transition. And so there's really two things we have to do. Number one, we have to understand that America must lead when it comes to new, clean, renewable energy innovation. And the way to do that is begin to do the right kind of incentives. And again, this sounds like technocratic, but it's the kind of thing that, that Secretary Clinton knows like the back of her hand. We've got to extend tax credits for renewables. I fought to do that in the Senate in this last big omnibus bill, but they are too short, three, five years. They have to go farther for wind, farther for solar, uh, and farther for other innovations. We need to invest ourselves in the innovations of technology. This is why you see even now uh, philanthropists like Bill Gates who are setting up funds to make sure that this country uh, can stay on the, on the forefront of that. We need to make sure that Hillary's vision is in place. She wants to make sure that we have half a billion new solar panel installations in her first term, half a billion, and she also believes that within 10 years of her presidency, we can have the, all the homes in our country have enough clean, renewable energy to power all of the homes in our country. But we also have to know that we have to prepare for a transition. And we have to make sure that whether you're a coal miner or an oil driller, I hope to see the day that we do not have a nation dependent upon those dirty fossil fuels that are causing problems. But we have to make sure uh, that we have transitions so that everybody, does no, nobody gets left behind. And that's where the, the compassion of Clinton really gets me when she talks about this issue in a whole. And I just want to uh, finish by saying, um, because you really were talking about a specific incident, 
in which the interests of an industry were, were so um, uh, cavalier and, and, and destructive that they were undermining a family that had been doing their way of business for a long time. The water question that was asked before about when, we, when we, they pump this slurry into the ground uh, as a part, and, and you see these companies, wildcatting companies, who let that slurry into rivers and lakes that's despoiling our country. That's why right now the attacks on the EPA are, uh, 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 that we're seeing right now in Congress are outrageous. And what I want is a ferocious grandma in the White House who understands that the children like, Chase who, uh, like Chance, who was just uh, held up here before, uh, don't have situations like what's happening in Flint. What, what, what Secretary Clinton said to me, which, which is so true, is that Flint is not an anomaly. Please understand that. What I loved about Secretary Clinton is this, this wasn't new to her. This wasn't the story of the moment. We have half a million children every year in this country who are being poisoned by lead. I, I, we have kids in West Virginia who are being poisoned by, by, by private industries who are reckless with what they're doing with their water. We have, in, we have places in Pennsylvania with the same lead levels as, as Flint has now. And so if we don't start seeing this, the larger picture that it is, and begin to fight back to preserve our water systems, to preserve the sanctity of our soil uh, and the, God, the gifts and the treasure that God has given us in our, in our natural resources, then we're going to see generational damage done to our children. And the last example, I'll give you this. People don't even realize this. The number one reason why children miss school, the number two, okay, stop Barry taking my lead from me. She's yelling out the answer already. The number one reason for childhood uh, um, uh, hospitalizations is, now you can say it, yell it out, asthma. asthma. It's asthma. Now, why do we have such high asthma rates? Why do we have such a high asthma rate? And, and, and a lot of that, thank you very much, is air quality. And why do we have such poor air quality? Did, did you Stop. <laughs> did, did, did Secretary Clinton send you out here, or did she send me? <laughs> but you guys know it. So I just want you to know that to have somebody who is a fighter, who understands that, 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 that no matter if you look over here at clean energy, if you look over here at tax credits, you've got to be watching your back about the rolling back of the kind of uh, 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 enforcement that the EPA is doing. We need to fight this battle on all fronts to ensure that the future for all Americans, the children of coal miners and the children of solar panel installers, that all Americans, that the clean energy future is one where America is leading the globe and, it's, and empowering our economy at the same time.